on, guys. Ew. Long time no see. Marty Gennetti apparently killed somebody. Apparently. <laughs> you hear you hear anything about that, Chris? Just randomly posted to Facebook that there was some guy who he decided to make disappear. When he was 13 years old because he tried <laughs> to buy weed off of him and he tried to molest him or something. So he said that was the first guy he made disappear. I thought he was saying it like as a reference to like him wanting to get with um, a girl or something. Maybe I misread it. I don't know. I don't know. But I tell you one thing, it's it's under investigation now, apparently. So, <laughs> of course it is. He's fixing to join the wonderful ranks of Chris Benoit and Jimmy Snuka, apparently, if it's true. Yes, apparently, so, yeah. so legitimately, he posted this on Facebook, and then now he's under investigation because of his own post? Yes. Probably. Yep. Yes. What a fucking idiot. Dude, well, he always Marty posts Gennetti weird here. stuff. He always this posts Marty weird Gennetti stuff. Here. We're talking he had about a post this. with a bunch of flour on him, and he said it was cocaine. Yo, I met Marty Gennetti. He did a, uh, a signing for, like, the company that I, I worked for, the wrestling company I worked for, and, and they paid him to do, a uh, like, an autograph signing thing. And he looked like he literally just rolled out of bed and just showed up, you know? <laughs> 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 he looked bad. But he had his Intercontinental title with him, though, so, I mean, that was cool, I guess. That's all he's got, man. Yeah, but well, surprised hadn't hawked that already. But in, uh, in other movie news, you know, I'm not really hearing much, man. It's been a slow week. You know, apparently I'm thinking... I'm thinking everything is going to come out next year, right? Most of it. At this point. So, <laughs> what do we got to look forward to this year? Is anything coming out this year? Honestly, that's part of, I know last episode we talked about the, talked about Host. That's part of why Host, I think, got so big is we don't have theatrical things to push. England um, opened a lot of their theaters just recently. Yeah. And they decided to open it by showing things like Ghostbusters. Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Shawshank Redemption. Yep. You know, that was how they were going to pull people back in because they don't have new stuff to show, uh, kind of like a drive-in. I did um, get a, uh, an email. Blood Quantum is coming to Blu-ray, by the way. Not surprising. Yeah. Very good. Um, Which, but that's most, the thing. It's like Blood Quantum and mm-hmm. Host streaming. It's Everything a very Shutter you know, influenced year, you know? Shutter, <laughs> Amazon Prime, you yeah. know, anybody but who has a thing, you know. You got to think all those people that go to Walmart and just look through the horror movies and buy, like, all the bullshit that's on that bottom row because <laughs> it's 10 bucks. I like that bottom row. I know you do, Chuck. Um, and I did, too, when I was in high school. But, <laughs> so, that's good for Shutter though, because all of Shutter stuff goes to Walmart. So oh, a yeah. lot of people have no idea what Shutter is or won't fork up the seven dollars to pay for Shutter each month, but they can still get stuff like Blood Quantum. Oh yeah. Um, so they can yeah. it's still they can still ingest good stuff for the most part. So so, so so what would you gentlemen say if we compared the straight to DVD stuff now to the straight to DVD stuff we used to get in like the early two thousands? What do you think's better? Early two thousands. Yeah, they, like the early, it, yeah. Everybody talked bad about this, the early 2000s stuff. And I, I, a couple years ago, a video store around here went out of business. They were selling DVDs for a dollar a piece, man. And this was like, they caught me at a time when I actually was, I had quite a bit of funds on me. So I went and I bought like a hundred movies. buy $15 movies. <laughs> yeah, right? Like I bought, I bought like a hundred movies from these people. And most of it was the early, like we're talking about uh, murder set pieces, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, a lot of people crap on, like, the early 2000s, but what I've watched is not bad. You know, like, Bloody Murder and stuff like that. This stuff isn't... Is it not? Is it classic stuff? No. But it's better than, say, what, The Trees Have Eyes and Robert the Doll Part 7 that's at Walmart these days. But you've got stuff like Malevolence that came um, straight to DVD, and that was, like, what, 2006? Something like that? Yeah. I um, love Tamara. Tamara was a great movie from the early Yeah, 2000s. Tamara was good. Um, the Toolbox Murders remake from Toby Hooper. That yeah. was that was like 2003, 2004. Then, course, then you had your Dark Harvest. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Didn't I mean, that the, come the from West Virginia? Dark Horror Fest was early 2000s. Basically, Scarecrow gone wild. Well, yeah. Pretty mm-hmm. much. Hey, but now, uh, dark, the, the eight films that I for, I love that stuff. That's what I'm saying. That was part of that. Like, yeah. When, yeah, I know. I just watched that, you review them all. I know. For the last, um, for the last year. Well, I think when, like, when people are saying that kind of thing, they don't think about, yeah, you have stuff, some stuff now that's good. You know, some stuff direct to video now that's good. But back in the early 2000s, you didn't have to sift through the asylum to get to the stuff. Yeah, you didn't have well. to sift through like a bunch of the other companies that have cropped up since then 
and not that they make bad movies necessarily, but like I don't remember brain damage films really existing back then. And I would see their ads in Rue Morgue and other stuff, and I was just like, this stuff looks like garbage. Like I'm sure some probably some it's fine, it but, but you know, yeah, some of it was okay, but like you know now. You got stuff that's got some pretty cool covers, like, you know, yeah. the, the Cabin 28, you know, stuff like that, you know, and, and it's just dull when you see it. There's no life in a lot of these, which I watch. Some, most of these things from both decades are on Tubi, mm -hmm. and uh, I watched Killer Sofa the other night, which looks like it'd be great, you know. <laughs> it's terrible. Terrible. So, I don't know, man. I miss, I miss the early 2000s in, in a lot of ways, like... Remember, like, even the mid-2000s, like, stuff like the Otis and, was it, Rest oh, Stop and stuff like that. The too. Loved Ones technically counts as, like, 2011, 2012, and that was direct yeah. video, basically. Like, you never thought, like, at the time people would say, man, I missed this time period, but I kind of missed this time period, because in 2009, when I first got well, because in... because now like, anything in, can be made. Anything. Yes. And, any, any, and, and companies are so desperate to make money off of, of the titles that they have to snatch up all these titles, anything that's available, so anything can get released, you mm -hmm. know. But back when, you know, I started, well, end of 2008 and early 2009, the indie stuff was a lot better. I mean, House of the Devil was an indie movie. You know, it was straight to DVD, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, nothing like that anymore. Back when I started reviewing, Magnet was kind of in the peak of its power, and so, like... I remember for a good long while, my top fives were populated with Black Death. I saw The Devil, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. You know, they're not technically direct-to-video because they play a few theaters in Los Angeles, a few theaters in NYC. Bam, boom, done. Here comes your Blu-ray. Yeah. But Those were all you know, last, The Last Circus, fantastic movie. Like, yeah. uh, every, everything now that's, that's straight to DVD at Walmart feels like it's on the, like, the time period we're talking about, feels like it's on the full moon's level of what full moon was doing about that time. Like, Sometimes like, I think they're trying to match that, because they, like, a movie like, and I don't, I've never seen it, I don't know if it's good, bad, I'm just using it as an example, Velocipaster. I've got okay. it, but I'm not watching. I, I have no idea how good the movie is, but people see the buzz that mm -hmm. Velocipaster gets, or Clown Nato. Clown Nato is terrible. I've heard it that. I've terrible. never seen it, but Chuck, yeah, no, no, we're going to we're going to get on. hate. We're going to get hated on now yeah. because oh, you're, yeah, you're forgot, bashing yeah. the movie. You son of a bitch! <laughs> nah, How dare you? Chuck's but joking. That, it's, it's opposite day. <laughs> that that is on the level of the full moon stuff. Like that's like evil bong territory. But what I'm saying is, it gets popular. People hear about the movie, the name, and whether man. it's good or not, they want to hear about it. It's like, and so I like other people go, "Well, I got to make my own clownado." Look, I know I know Donald Farmer. You know he's. Made shot on video movies for years. He lives in my town. I was in a movie with him. I like him. But he made Shark Exorcist, which was <laughs> terrible. Terrible. You could hear him shooting another scene in the background of one scene. That's how bad it was. Okay. He That's kind of amazing. People, he had people walk through the Nashville malls and just like guerrilla style film stuff. You know, it's just, and it's terrible. But because of the name, they sold a lot of copies of that DVD. Which I guess that's probably Wild Eyes' idea, probably. I well, guess. yeah. I mean, but, near the end of the time I reviewed, I reviewed Zombie Babies. Oh, and to this, to this that's day, a West Virginia, Chris. And to that's this a West day, Virginia movie. even mm -hmm. you would never do this. I have never seen a movie reach its ending, and the ending starts, and then suddenly it's like the ending never happened, and they go back to the beginning of the same scene again on an actual released disc. I've mm -hmm. never seen that happen. I've never and watched that's it. The, that's the kind of thing. I, mean, that I, I know out. him, yeah, you know. but I've never watched. I need it. to. I need to revisit that. I need to revisit that because it's got people I know too. Because I I'm, mean, I'm friends with a lot of. Pork chop's fine. Pork chop two is yeah. fine, but my god, that movie Pork just needed one. a little more time. Pork chop one's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pork chop three has got somebody named Renfield in it. I think it's decent. Uh, Wait, speaking of, um, just because you said him, he actually just texted me again. Did he? Yes. Um, so back to the last episode with the host, and he gave mm -hmm. us his his little rundown there. Um, mm -hmm. He just sent me his rating for it, and it was 1.5. Lowest it of literally, four. It literally just says 1.5, seen it all before. Well, there, there you, you go. go. There you go. Why is he writing for these websites? Why are they paying him? 
throw out on bloody disgust or something like that. How much time do you think he's got with his? <laughs> this is I, thought he had, I thought he had plenty of free time right now. He had 56 minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he wrote. Uh, he wrote and produced two full EPs for that um, Amber Alert project he's doing during his what? quarantine. Why two EPs? Why not just one full LP? I I don't know. Music people. Man. Yeah, he he I, does I, he does things that there's there's a gimmick dip. for everything. So. Double dipping. He's double dipping. Because why sell one album when you can sell two? Yeah. I mean, I, every time he, he it's like he he don't like getting comfortable. You know what I mean? It's like the the Jason's thing worked, so I guess maybe maybe it was I just put myself now. Maybe it was starting to lose a little steam, and so now here's something else. No, he just can't do anything with the Jasons because they're we're fucking quarantined. Oh God! The only one that matters is only live with them. No, I don't think any of them live around here. Let's be clear: he could purposely still do stuff for the Jasons because I think all of us would want to see a band of people in Jason masks wearing masks over the Jason masks. Yeah, give them that I idea. think that is an excellent visual. <laughs> I thought he lived They could do years. a Zoom they could do a Zoom video. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Hey, Maybe it's been will. working for uh, 2 minutes to to late night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. And we've already mentioned Tubi today, which and Shutter, which by the way, this movie we're reviewing is on both. I know. We're we're and okay, to be Two clear. Two cuts of the movie, one on each platform i made tubi, tubi has the uncut english export edition with the worst goddamn cover art you will ever see in your entire life yeah who, who shot that right like, who took that picture well the thing that's ironic about it was when we did our tubi episode it was on there and what it had was the cover art that used to be on the code red blu-ray yeah and they changed and it at, and at some point yeah it just went away and became this it doesn't even look like a character from the movies on it it it's just some random woman. It's a it's a royalty free picture, I guess, or at least it's a gotta Photoshop, be. a Photoshop one at least. It's got to be. Yeah. Uh, but then, as we record this, yesterday, Shutter added the U.S. theatrical version, which is ten minutes shorter. They literally just added it yesterday. Yep, pretty sure. Oh, how convenient! I know, right? We didn't even plan this. I'm telling you, tip of the well, phone. I, I want <laughs> the TV version because, unlike you gentlemen, I don't have the box set. But. uh... You know, you, yeah, you all, yeah, what, rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I watch it with commercials. It ain't that bad with commercials. But the movie, I mean, are we ripping off Rosemary's Baby or The Exorcist or both? I mean, is it like a rip off of both? Well, first I got, things so first. First of all, on, yeah, you, I think you the got movie is called Beyond the Door. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we never said the name. Yes. No, we didn't, Chuck. Okay. We just showed a picture. It's, uh, it's right. from um, 1974. 71. Um,. The way they tell it in the documentary, they they pitch it as seventy four. Who can so say? maybe they're referring to the release? No, it was seventy four. You're right. You're right. Okay. Um. But yeah, it's seventy four. If you're watching the introduction on either the Code Red DVD from way back when, or on this set, the actress lead thinks it's a ripoff of The Omen. Um. And that and goofy bastard be- from Code Red, like, oh, you mean The Exorcist? Um, yes. Yeah. With his Bill? his giant ass um, Eugene Levy uh, eyebrows. Yeah. Oh God, who's interviewing him? Who's uh, interviewing it's him? according to the back of the Arrow, because basically what Arrow did for this release, it's the American versions out of print. The UK version of this exact same set, which is region free, is available on Diabolic as we speak for thirty seven dollars. Don't tell him that. Chuck still needs to buy one. Yeah, how many copies does he have? Don't I don't know, me. but I'll link it With in the description the respect, if you want to grab one. It's not going to be up for about two weeks, man. You got time. <laughs> I got time. I got time. Go ahead. Um, but uh, on the back of it, every special feature that says archival is literally taken from Code Red's old DVDs and Blu-rays, all of them. So it mentions that, like the audio, the archival audio commentary is with the director, historian Nathaniel Thompson, and moderated by Lee Christian. The introduction is with Lee Christian. Everything that's an interview with Lee Christian is with him, basically. I thought that was Bill. No, Bill would be in a banana banana costume. You know this. He sounds very New York when he's talking. I've never seen him. I've never gone out of my way to look him up because of of how he blew me off for Exercast. 
don't blame you. But anyway, <laughs> but he did he did the other podcast though. He did uh, that was so that was bef- I mean that was before. But that's the yeah. reason why he's never done another one. Those fucking yeah. bastards. Mm-hmm. Well, no, he did one more. He did the uh, Shockwaves podcast when it was the other name. And that was, that son of a bitch because <laughs> that would have been after when he was supposed to be on Exercast. It would have oh, been. Yes. We weren't big enough for him at the time, I guess. I guess. Um, but yeah, that's him. basically basically this the set we're reviewing. At least W and I are reviewing Arrow's release. It's two disc. It's out of print in American version. Mostly out of print in the UK version. Comes with a poster. Comes with a sixty page perfect bound book. It's two disc. One disc is the uncut English export version that's presently on Tubi as we record this. The other is the US theatrical version, and that's presently on Shutter as we record this. Plus, it's got uh, a documentary about the sort of kind of history of Italian exorcist ripoffs and a whole bunch of interviews and commentaries. Wow. True story. Continue. What's the plot on this one, W? So the plot is a woman gets possessed. That's simple. That's the simple version. That's the simple version of the plot. Well, you're, first of all, the devil goes on and on and on in a long monologue at the start of the movie. Which is uh, great. <laughs> he likes to hear himself talk, apparently. Which yeah. uh, leads, leads us into the uh, start of the movie where we find out that this one guy is pretty well about to die, but the devil gives him a little more time just to bring the baby to him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, he, and if he lets the baby be born, he may let him live a little longer. Yeah. But he's the devil, so, you know. So, uh, you, you know, shake your yeah. luck in your own hands. And then the movie proceeds to play a Jamaican cover, of, or, I don't say cover song, but a Jamaican song. Is it blues? What do you call it? What kind of music is this? I, it's mentioned in the... It I don't, don't know, I'm fit looking. with the rest of the movie, though. As well no, as, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But that's our opening credit sequence where your favorite scene pops up where a kid is doing what in the back seat? Okay, so the, the, the is song very, is called "Bargain with the Devil." By the way, that's yeah. it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Bargain yeah. with the Devil. And he, for the record, as as the mother is driving her kids all around in this car, aimlessly through the streets of San Francisco, which no seatbelts, no seatbelts, no seatbelts. They weren't required in the in the seventies. The documentary points out they filmed all of this stuff in San Francisco with no permits because they happened to have Italian American people on the on the crew who could talk out the co- talk the cops out of running the production out of the way. But um, sorry, Italian American cops. But anyway, mm-hmm. they're driving all around. He's working with this band, and every so often he interrupts him and goes, "What the hell was that? That was garbage. Try again." Music starts up again. Back to the driving around again. And I told them before the show, the sole difference between the uncut English version and the U.S. theatrical version is the U.S. theatrical version seems to not have any of this driving around or opening musical sequence. They don't have the kid drinking soup out of a, out of a can? It does have that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, the husband, it was in Deep Red and Inferno. And the, the guy that is spared a few more days to deliver the baby... Is the doctor from Zombie? Yep, Richard Johnson. Yep. Yep. Um, what Chuck is referring to, for the record, is for some reason the the little boy of the family he loves to just sit around and drink his Campbell's green pea soup out of a can with a straw. straw, and his sister just loves to read the novelization of the movie Love Story, and as is proven later in the movie, owns about twenty copies of it. I think she carries 12 copies with her everywhere she goes. This but, is a very weird movie. Did, did, and Chuck was like, that? is this stuff not weird? But the dad says, I think something's he's wrong like, with our kids. Yeah. Because he's who does this? He's a psychiatrist? Yeah. He's like, yeah. He's, he drinks soup out of, with a straw all day, and she carries around a dozen of the same book yeah. everywhere well, she my, goes. My question is, is, when they give the kid this soup, do they warm it up with a lighter or something before they give it to him, or do they just give him the... Cold can soup with a straw. I mean, maybe it wasn't actually soup. Maybe it was vodka. There you go. That would have explained some things. <laughs> maybe there's maybe there's green pea soup in it because of the Exorcist. Maybe. I think. Well, here's the thing. They talk in the documentary, and we'll get into it later on. But basically, he was flying over Taiwan or Thailand, I forget which, and there was a monsoon. And before he got on the flight, he found a copy of the Exorcist in the airport, bought it read it over this flight because of the, you know, and 
gets on the ground and immediately calls up the people for the rights, and they go, no, no, Warner's got the rights to it. They're making it. Right. He goes, fuck that. I'm going to make my own anyway. <laughs> and he basically decides to make this movie, in essence. Uh-huh. That's exactly what, movie, what he said in that interview. So, so I, I feel like a bunch of nothing happens at the start of this thing, for the most part. Oh, it is, it's very slow, and um, the mom, Jessica, she is slowly, slowly becoming possessed, and it's like, you find out that she's pregnant, and that's mm-hmm. why she's acting weird, and that's why she's throwing up, but she's throwing up blood, and she finds out, she just finds out that she's pregnant, and she's but like... she's been pregnant for three months. Yeah, she thinks she's yeah. been pregnant for seven weeks, but the doctor tells her it's been three months. <laughs> right. And uh, that the baby is coming in alarming rates. Mm. Uh, we also find them being followed by an older guy throughout the whole damn movie mm. um, until the end when he actually comes into play. But really, the only time that you see this is when the dad's not around and it's just the mom at home with the two children. And the children like experience this stuff, but they don't tell anybody. Like literally their whole rooms, their whole room starts shaking. The drawers fly out of the dressers, books fly off the shelves. Toys are glowing eyes. Things roll around. Lights flow through the floor. Dolls are moving. uh, And they don't fucking tell anybody. The closest they do is they go to the dad after he comes home and they go, please don't leave us alone with mommy anymore. (laughs) Yeah, so she leaves with, the, like, the doctor's wife, I think. <laughs> because the doctor's a friend of the family. And she's yeah. the babysitter. Yeah. And the kid, the boy's got an invisible friend. You know, yes. at least he does at one point with the uh, yep. chair. He's got bruises on him that just pop up. The kids are also foul Bite marks. as hell. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and My wife reason, looked over at me and she goes, those are our kids, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, as we watch the mother just slowly become more possessed, you know, she very strangely gives this boy a very uncomfortable mouth kiss. As he's like, and it's like it builds to it too, because she's like normally just kissing him on the cheek, and then suddenly she pulls back and looks at him, and it's just like, and he's like, whoa, whoa, that was out of nowhere. Okay, rough. a little rough, but uh, yeah, it's strange, strange movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard, I haven't heard a lot of good things about this movie over the years. I'll be honest. And I've, I've never wanted to see it for myself, so I'm very happy to finally check it out. It's a far cry from The Exorcist. Well, that's... But it may be better than The Exorcist 2, though. So, the um, the introduction that Code Red had filmed, the main actress is in the introduction. She says it's a, it's a like we talked about, she says it's a uh, omen. Uh, references the omen. And, and I can see that. It, yeah, that's the thing. He's quick to go to The Exorcist. First of all, there's reference to the omen, in a way, in the movie. Plenty. But second of all, I honestly think this is more of a Rosemary's Baby than an yeah. Exorcist. Absolutely. Just in terms of how it's presented, how it plays out. It is for a hunk of it. Yeah. But then we go full on Exorcist at one point. Yeah, it's it's both. Yeah. Everybody all like this whole movie comes with a documentary about Italian Exorcist ripoffs. This uh-huh. isn't just an Exorcist ripoff. <laughs> Which I think the movie's at its best when we're, when the mom's doing Exorcist stuff. You know, in the pea soup or whatever it's fine. Elements. It yeah. also like, presages Poltergeist because it has that sequence where everything goes crows haywire in the in the. Bedroom. I will say her head spin. That is great. Better, better than The Exorcist. Yes. Yeah. Also, oh. her head spin's good. Also, the eye thing. Yeah, yeah. That, the eye is thing that, is that a trick she could do, or is that or is that fake? I my thinking is it's a composite. Because. Sometimes you got people that can do weird eye twirls, like the cock eye. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's people like that down here. I'm, I've seen it. Chuck said if they're cock eyed, <laughs> they, they can do the weird eye tricks if they're cock eyed. Yeah. <clears throat> so what they call it down here. Uh huh. Okay. Y'all never heard that phrase? Oh no, I have. We have. Okay, all right, all right. <clears throat> As you were saying. So anyway, um, basically, she gets more and more off, you know, randomly starts breaking shit, starts cursing people out at random in certain situations. Um, And eventually, you know, she starts getting to a point where they decide they have to decide whether she should be put in the hospital 
or not. She starts cursing out the doctor, cursing out her husband, gets up in the middle of the night, floats out the door. You know, that kind of stuff. And all the while, the strange man is getting closer and closer and closer. Yep. Oh, we almost forgot. She also eats banana peels. That she finds on, in, on, the, on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this, this here is a, maybe minor spoiler details. I don't know. But so we, the guy that, that's like basically having to do the devil's work here, like the doctor from, from Zombie, we see him fly off of a bridge or off a cliff, at least at the start of the movie. Are we to believe that his car is stays in the air like this throughout the whole time? <laughs> I think so. One of the things in the arrow set they have in the book is a little page that says the maker of this film uses a technique where a shot is held. This is intentional and is a part of the film. It is not an error in the transfer. And so like the moments where suddenly the movie just stops on a yeah. shot, kind of like that, that's intentional. That's apparently part of what he's doing. So I guess, at least in that scene, yes, you're supposed to believe the car just sat there hovering over the water for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> or for 10 months or whatever it is. Yeah, well, well nobody noticed that there's a car just hanging off the cliff. Well, I'm sure it's stuff. not seen by anyone else other than said person in the car. Sure. Yeah, maybe. And he's like, he's very, you know, he's very ghostly in his stalking of the uh, people. Yes. yes. So you could you could say that. It, it has its moments. There's, there, I feel like this the version I watched is at, at like an hour and 47 minutes, I want to say. Yep, the that's the uh, English export one, yep. I feel like you should, you could, you could cut 15, 20 minutes off this. And oh yeah. Fine. Well, in ten minutes, it's just the intro. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's the thing. Apparently, that's the difference between the English export and the U.S. theatrical. And the U.S. theatrical, I didn't watch the whole thing because I realized that was all they cut. But I knew going in. Is that same song what the intro song is on the other version? No, because they cut the whole thing. There's no band. There's well, no what, scenes with them in the thing. Is it better is it better more fitting music then? No, because they cut completely all of the driving of that shot. It literally goes from the beginning scene in the black area with the candles and the woman immediately jump cut to tiny bit of their driving, pulls up, guy jumps in the car. So there's no real opening credits? Then. The opening credits happen during the black sequence. Oh, like it says beyond the door during okay. that, and there's a little yeah. bit of opening credits, but it's okay. over the black okay. of the opening sequence. That would probably help a great deal. It, it does, honestly, a little bit. because I'm sure it does. You know. <laughs> yeah, well. I, if I had known that that was the difference, I probably would have watched that because I saw this exact same cut because I have the Code Red Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Is it on Blu-ray, Code Red? Code Red did DVD and Blu-ray. How's the Blu-ray look, though? Not as good as this one. Yeah, yeah. This are, these are both new 2K restorations by Arrow. Code on Red their, kind of shit the bed on a few of their Blu-rays they put out. But I've got a, uh, a DVD of this, too, mm -hmm. but it's not Code Red. Code Red did do this on DVD. They did a two-disc set that had the uh, the cover art of uh, the book that came with this. Well, who did the version? I don't, I don't think I have. There's you a, may have a Code Red DVD. Company, but yeah. I thought there was a Code Red DVD that had like the old poster art that like had just like her head here, and it says, you know, beyond. The... Mine's mine's got the original. My DVD has the original artwork on it. It might have been from a few places. I mean. I know that Code Red did a two-disc one and a one-disc one, I think, and that might be part of what's also going on. Maybe. I do think mine's a one-disc. They, they did that with the uh, with the uh, Deadpool. Or dead, not Deadpool. Dead dead dead. Yeah. There's words the that haven't been in the past while. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I'm trying to pull this up here and see if this is the one you're talking about. This is what Walmart.com's got, if it'll load. But the apps give me a problem. All right. We'll come, we'll come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, though, it, it just, just progresses, 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 progresses. Eventually, the doctor and the husband have a conversation, and they're like, we got to figure this out. So she has to go to the hospital, et cetera. They strap her to the bed, and while she's strapped to the bed, suddenly the doctor's watching over, and then suddenly, bam, she's across the room in the corner, freaking him out. Yeah, like that. Okay. That's, he showed, it's basically the cover, the reversible cover of the, the Blu-ray, in essence. Mm -hmm. This thing. Yeah. That's their reversible cover. Um, and so now 
you know, she's gone full bore, definitely is possessed by something, and is messing with people, and they got to figure out how to deal with it, keep her safe, whether they want to have the kid or not, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How'd you like her conversation with a doctor where she said she doesn't want to have this baby? And he said, well, the only way that we're going to abort the baby is that if it causes um, complications with your life. And then she's like, no one's going to take this baby from me. Well, I like the part in that where she goes, if I'll do it myself. And I'm like, coat hanger. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, She'd have been better off. Um, she becomes extremely unlikable the more possessed she is. Yes. Which is good. Which is and, good acting, you know. And she also, and it's not, you know, like in Exorcist, the, the makeup job in Exorcist on Possessed Regan is iconic. It's classic. To be fair, it's not bad here. I not mean, at all. It, it does its job, you know. Even when she has, you know, it's it, it looks great when she's got the electrodes hooked up. like Because the, the doctor's like, something is medically wrong with her. Yeah. Even though they won't take her to the hospital, they're still like, you can treat her here. So she's like hooked up to the electrodes, and that's one of the points where she's all fucking rigged out. Which, and I should point this out, they mention like um, on some level that they made Exorcist Two because of something. And when we went back to marriage, because of one of the other um, Italian Exorcist ripoffs. But when that scene happened, I was like, okay, so Warner Brothers sued him. And they claim in the documentaries that it was because of visual copyright. Like they were saying that it was because Warner Brothers saying, well, you shot this the same way we did and you did this and that. And he's like, and you watch the movie. You're like, no, they fucking didn't. You know, kind of thing. Like you can see why he lost. But then you see that scene and I'm like, did Warner Brothers watch Beyond the Door 2 and go, you know what we should put into Exorcist 2, The Heretic? A scene where we hook someone up with electro, hook Regan up with electrodes in her hair and have her go like through psychological testing. Yep. Because I'm like, are we kind of like more Mobius stripping the movies now? You know, or <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's it to me. Like I said, if I watch the version that you watch, on, which is on Shutter, right, with the version without the. the I watched both of them, but yeah, the one on Shutter is the 90 minutes. I would. 90s. I would have, I think I'd like that better than I did this one. This one here just seemed a little bit long, and with the few commercials it had, it was even longer. So this was two uh, hours. Yeah. Of my case, time, yeah. pretty much. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you, I, I, this one, it's pretty average to me, so I'm going to give it a two and a half at the end of the day. Now, cut it down a little bit, you know, take that awful intro off of it, and I may have even bumped it up to a, up to a three, but I'd have to watch it another time to see the... I, um, I, I think it's but, smart in the way that it doesn't go the same way the exorcist does and of course he couldn't because he couldn't get the rights for it but to her still going out and living her life where reagan was as soon as it happened she was confined to her room which of course builds suspense but it's it's nice to see her interacting with society still going in the shops still shopping still you know fucking picking up a banana peel and eating it off the ground um, so you see the little quirks and things that mentally and physically is changing within her in her day-to-day life. Okay. Uh, like, like I said, the scene with a doctor. It She has an episode there. So I, I really enjoy that aspect of it. And I think like the, the, final, the final act um, is, I think it's excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, her possessed and like full on and having the conversation that she's having or the devil was having whatever. I think it's great. Great actress. Oh, she's wonderful. Um, my, my biggest complaint aside from, yeah, you could cut 10 minutes from the beginning and you could definitely cut five minutes or so elsewhere. The ending is real fucking cheesy. (laughs) <laughs> the end, like the the, the yes, very ending is very very cheesy and that really bums me out. But I've always really liked this movie, and I mean I I, I have a original theatrical poster over here folded up. Um, I really like this movie. I've even I'm almost positive I've got the soundtrack on vinyl because the soundtrack is good. Like that opening Fine, song, exactly yeah, is is bad. But there's also um, a documentary on here about uh, 
Beyond the Door Music. It's called I think it's called Beyond Music or something. So there's also that where they talk about how they're doing the film, the the score for it. But yeah, it's slow. I guess mm-hmm. you know if you want to get down to it, I give it a, a solid three and a half. This release that you can still get from Diabolic for $37, oh which is great. Sorry, Chuck. Um, yeah. It was a solid five-star release mm-hmm. from Arrow. Yeah. Uh, like, the movie itself, you know, I was thinking about it while I was watching because I had just watched Host before watching this, and I talked about how they telegraph everything. I'm not going to give a spoiler of what I'm talking about, but there's a scene in the beginning where someone is discussing something in the house. And the very next, like a little bit later on in the movie, the thing that they discuss comes into play as one of the initial things, like in the initial creepy things. And I'm like, I did not see that coming. You know, that was, it's a little random, sure, but that's kind of the point. But it's different. You know, it's unique. And the other thing about it is it is slow. It's slow in part because they are a bunch of things that are a little too weird that maybe shouldn't be in it. But at the same time, it's also slow because you're building tension. Yeah. You know, you don't want her to just immediately, you mentioned, you know, re- her still living her life. You don't want her to just, bam, crab walk. You know, mm-hmm. it's better when you can kind of have a relationship with her, understand her relationship with her husband, her relationship with her kids more because then you feel something when she's completely gone basically um again like we've all said it's it's true it's slow they talk all the time in the documentaries and all the interviews the reason this movie is relatively well known now is not because it did well in italy it did well in america and the version on the second disc of this that is the shorter one is the theatrical cut they released in america which tells you something about it when that cut is 10 minutes shorter. You know, I mean, like you said, this release gets five stars. It's just like the release they did for Reanimator in that they put everything they had into that release, you know, and gave the movie as much context as they possibly could. They took everything Code Red did, put it on this Blu-ray set, and then added another five or six interviews and an entire one hour and 30 minute long documentary, you know, about it and other movies. It's a great release. The movie itself, I'm not going to disagree with you guys. It, it's, it needs, as, a, as the uncut version, it needs, that beginning needs to be cut out. It's slower than it should be. And personally for <laughs> me, some of the weirdness felt like it was just there to be there. Like you mentioned the ending and how cheesy it is. That's kind of part of weird part of the weirdness because it gets to the core of the mystery box that the kid's carrying around the whole movie, you know. Yeah, like he gets a present and never fucking opens it. What kid doesn't open a present? Right, just carries it around with him in the black and yellow box, just do 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 do. Well, you these know, kids are weird. Anyway. These kids are very thing. weird. And and the weirdness of it on one level, it's part of the movie's charm, but on the other level, kind of holds it back. But it's definitely a good movie, like worthwhile. I give it a three. What'd you give a Chuck? Two and a half. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's, it's average film. Um, I think and... I give it a three, but I would point out that historical relevance in terms of like what it led to in terms of Italy and their horror output and things like that, because they talk in it about that at, in the documentary they mentioned at the end that at the time in the seventies and eighties, Italy basically looked to America and said these things are doing really well over there. We can make a bunch of them real quick, you know, and make things like them and stuff. And it's half the reason that zombie Gallows, movies, zombie movies, mm. you know, action movies that came out from over there, like strike commando and robo war, you know, all of that kind of stuff came because they realized they could make money quick. They are distributors in America could pick up all this stuff at once and just spin it back around and put it back out. Come on. That's how Fulci created a career. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, this movie still has importance on that level. That's why I can give it a three, but still say, like, it's it's bigger than that because of, like, kind of what the movie represents, basically. Like, back in the day, I think I gave Blood Feast. I reviewed Blood Feast once for the, uh, 
for best horror movies, and I gave it like a 1.5. But I wrote in the review, I said, but it's Blood Feast. It's not a great movie, but it's Blood Feast. It has importance. And it's know? fun. You know, exactly. Blood Feast is, is movie... an amazingly fun film, but it's yeah. not a good movie. Right. This is a good movie. Not great. Good. And it has serious significance in terms of, you know, why there's so much good Italian stuff from the 70s and 80s. Well, sounds like I need to get the special editions and give all the extras a watch. I still need to watch the documentary, but I was going through, because I, I honestly never watched any of the um, stuff on the Code Red disc, aside from the film itself. Mm-hmm. So I was watching more of the Code Red archival stuff, but it sounds like a lot of stuff, because we were talking about this before we started recording, that's in the documentary came from the producer's uh, interview that he gave to Code Red. Some of it. I mean, because the thing is, in terms of special features, the movie itself on disc one comes with two audio commentaries. Uh, it's got one with the director of video, Asinitis. I don't think we mentioned he's yet another in our now proud extra cast tradition of Italian directors working under American sounding pseudonyms. Um, I believe that was Oliver Hellman and a co-worker. But anyway, and a co-director, a cinematographer. But anyway, uh, that one, and there's also an archival one with Juliet Mills, Scott Spiegel. It's moderated by Darren Gross and Lee Christian. Um, the introduction, there's a new interview with Asinitis that they filmed called The Devil and Me. That one's Arrows. Mm-hmm. So if that's the one you watched, that was Arrows. Um, Barrett's Hell is with the writer and cinematographer. That's a new one. Beyond the Music is the one you mentioned. That's new. Uh, Devil's Face is one with the camera operator. That's a new one. Motels and Devils is with one of the actors. Brand new. But then you have the 35-year anniversary featurette that the Code Red did. You have the archival Richard Johnson, an Englishman in Italy uh, special feature. Extra titles, trailers, TV spots. Then the second dish, you don't have any commentaries, but you have the hour and a half long documentary about yeah. just Italian ex- ex- exorcism movies. And the thing about that is, yeah, parts of the interviews carry over, but they also interview people like Sergio Martino, Kubi Avati, um, Alberto De Martino, Marcelo Avaloni. Some of these uh, some of these men are dead now, and they're basically using audio interviews from other stuff where they're talking about their movies and playing them as part of it. Uh, also, a older interview with uh, Gabrielle Lavia that Code Red did, not the one that Arrow did on the first disc, and a extended interview with the lead actress. And that's all here, not even counting the 60-page book, the poster, and we didn't even mention that it also has um, postcards. Gotta love the postcards. The yeah, interview I mean, the time- was, was one of the newer newer editions. Um, oh. By the time the uh, this episode comes up, I believe you'll have done an unboxing of this, probably and posted it, and you'll show some of this stuff off. But yep, it'll actually but, come out. The it'll already be up. Yeah, so you know that's for thirty seven bucks if you're getting it from Diabolic. To get that much shit for one movie is kind of batshit. You know and- it's. And this is, you know, to reiterate, this is region free, so it's going to work on your Blu-ray player. Yep. So I know a lot. I have, I've got friends that won't buy from Diabolic because they're not collectors, and they want things, but they're like, I don't know if this is going to play in my my DVD player. I don't know if my DVD player is region free. And I'm like, if you don't think it is, it's probably not. And stick to, you know, region A or region one, region zero. Mm-hmm. But this. You're you're fucking golden. Mm -hmm. That the only, the absolute only difference between mine and James is that this has your do 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 over here in the corner. Ah, god damn it! Other one, there you go, right there. Comparatively, age restriction. Yep, yours is all blurred out because you're blurred background. You can tell. You can tell though that this one doesn't have anything in the corner though. This is true. Chuck, where's yours? Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where is Sorry, being watched, It's being watched by COVID. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't care to buy it from Diabolic. I had to buy my uh, last house on the left one like that from Diabolic. We should point out, by the way, both of us have this. We were not sent this. We paid money for this. This was our choices. We, this yeah, is I not a actually just got review. this 
like two or three weeks ago. I got this a while ago. I got it when I got it. I pre-ordered it when it you got it when it was originally released. Yeah. Yep. It's just one because... of those things that I put off, and I realized the you know the U.S. region was was gone, and then that this one was the exact same. I was like, fuck it, I'll get it. I got it for the documentary because I love that kind of shit. So. Yeah. Like I said, I spent money on a, an original theatrical poster for this. So back in the days when I had money to yep. buy posters. Before you got married and had kids? Yeah, I was still married, just didn't have the kids. Well, huh. Maybe that, has your wife seen this and does she like it? No. She, well, bits and pieces of it she liked. I say this is yeah, this isn't as bad as no offense this isn't as bad as some of the stuff you've shown her. <laughs> no, um, you know what we did last night? We watched uh, the 4K release of Rad from Vinegar Syndrome, and <laughs> at first she was like, "Why the fuck are we watching this?" Because it's, it's radical, yo. Uh. Well, and here's the thing: like, I never had I had never seen the film. I knew it existed, but it's not something that when I was growing up, because it came out like the year I was born or the year after I was born or some shit. Mm. But when I was growing up, you, you, this is not something that you could just go and find or that your parents could get for you. And I rode BMX. I rode freestyle and it was probably my favorite thing ever growing up. I a hundred percent would rather do that than play any organized sport. This was I fucking loved it. Me, I fucking passion. loved it. But I couldn't, I couldn't get her to understand. I was like, this, like, I was like, I can do that. Well, I could do that when I was, you know, like 40 pounds lighter and a child. <laughs> like, <laughs> I could do that trick. I could do that oh. trick. I could do that. And she's like, I, I don't care. I may not own Rad, but I have BMX Bandits. As I BMX Bandits. Did you ever get Tammy and the T-Rex? Their other yeah. 4K release? I Both do, of yeah. You? I don't have it. Um, I will, I'll get it eventually. Um, I should have bought it. you would think it would be. Well, I've seen the movie. And the movie, we love, like, we both watched it and we loved it. It's super it, fun. It had more gore in it than I thought it was going to have. Well, that's the it thing. Definitely it's did. the gore cut. That's the thing. It's the, mm-hmm. they found extra gore scenes. And so they released this special version because they, yeah. We watched it on, um, on Shudder. Uh-huh. But we it was real it was real fun. I do need there needs to be a, a good copy of Gleaming in the Cube out there and Airborne. Huh. I don't think I've heard of this. I feel like I've heard of Airborne at some point. Airborne is a rollerblading movie and it's Seth Green I know is in it. Um Gleaming the Cube is Christian Slater, skateboard movie. He like his his brother gets killed, and he is doing like his own reconnaissance, trying to figure out who did it. But he's using his skateboard. Oh. I've only Maybe seen it once. Good time for movies. <laughs> I've only seen it once, and it was on like USA when I was a kid. I've never seen it since. I've debated on making a roller skate movie, you know, a skateboard movie. You know anybody I, can skateboard? You know, I know a few people. I know a few people do. Uh, just a roller, just a skateboarding movie. You plan to make it like a slasher or something? No, it's gonna be like a, you know, kind of like Deadbeat at Dawn with skate with skateboards. You know, I thought about I'd calling it Skate it. or Die, but I figured Nintendo would sue me. You know, so <laughs> I don't know if I get away with that or not. At present, my old college roommate has just texted me that a friend of his posted on Facebook that they had seen six years ago that the movie Rubber existed and commented that they hadn't seen it at the time. And six years later, she hadn't watched it. And he texted me and said, let me guess, you've actually seen this movie, haven't you? Yes, I have. <laughs> Not that great of a movie, really. But, uh, Dance Commander fucking loves it. Not that great. I'm okay with it. I I like the first half of it. It's when it goes into the second half where I'm just kind of like, mm. yeah. It is what it is. Well, Whatever. anybody got anything else to add? No, no. I I hope I get my copy before everybody else gets it. So. Oh, I do have one thing to add. Um, as we record this, uh, 
I will have my Severin order by the end of the day tomorrow. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when this comes out or tomorrow? No, as we're recording this. The next oh. Which is which is week. funny because we all got invoices a like, week before fuck? you. I don't understand. <laughs> Like, you yes, literally yes. paid a week later than we did, and none of and us... Got, and got all my information. I, I, I ordered after everyone. Got my information way after everyone. And yeah, coming tomorrow. And <laughs> the rest of us haven't even got shipping notifications. I'm, ex- I'm excited for you, buddy. I, I, I say, I'm not trying to be mean on that. I'm just like, exactly the conversation I wanted to have is, I don't get it either. Like, well, what's the like, big thing in this? Is this like the uh, like everything else has been announced as a solo release later on, right? Like, there's no the biggest things no... in it were Bahia Blanca, which I didn't get, mm-hmm. um, I didn't. and Frankie and its pal and his pals, which is getting a release otherwise on some level. I got uh, it. I Frankie, and, Frankie and his pals, like the only thing I'm interested in because I like shot on video stuff. Sure. But uh, you know, all the other stuff that was announced, like all the Fulci stuff's coming out anyway, you know. But I guess like uh, like the, well, that was uh, the focus that was part of the sale, wasn't it? Like the uh, the demonia or whatever it is. Yes, yep. demonia enigma. Yeah. Uh, Shining sex was also part of the sale. Didn't get that. Uh, did anybody? I bet you guys don't know offhand when the actual street date for the uh, regular release of those are, do you? Uh, it's supposed to be August releases. Oh well, good. Maybe I'll get mine pretty soon. Point for the for the regular ones. But they did say that everything should be shipped out, or will, they said will be shipped out by the 13th, and it's currently the 5th. Wow. So hopefully, every time I get on Facebook, there's a notification from that group, because of course there is. And it's always mm-hmm. like, oh, got my stuff in the day, or oh, here's my, my shipping notification email, and then I immediately go and refresh my inbox. God damn it. Nothing. You know, Tom Petty said the waiting is the hardest part, you know. It's like that that uh, that song. Um, is that a text message? Damn, oh. nothing. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that one. <laughs> Classic, right? Chef <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Connery that, original. On that note. See, this uh, is why I'm, I'm presently sending a text message right now. My notification sound is off, so you couldn't tell unless I just said that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well. So as the saga continues, maybe by the time we do Beyond the Door 2, you'll have your shipping notification. Chris. Oh, well, God, I hope, hope so. Because it's a week later, and it'd be a day before they said everyone will be shipped by. Yeah. Right. The, uh, the, the imagine, other... imagine if we're here next time, and I'm sitting here holding my screener copies, right? And that would... <laughs> That'd be hilarious. It would be, wouldn't it? But no, the, here's the thing that gets me, though, is... If you go on the Facebook group, mm-hmm. the only people I see getting their stuff are people who bought bundles. Like that's what it looks like to my eyes. Like it's just it's all people who bought the stuff that was for the sale. Yeah. I bought a thing, maybe two that were in the sale or at least they were promoted, but otherwise I was buying shit that wasn't like big name stuff. I didn't buy you know, any bundles, but I got a lot of this. I got a lot of the new stuff. That's why I'm kind of like, I'm really surprised if that's the case, because yeah, I would think they would have sent out the people who bought mostly stuff from the sale, but I don't know. Like, Eli got his stuff last week. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, oh, 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 we yeah, all get it yeah. soon. You gotta put that video in here. Ah, uh, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, well, no, now, that the, motion the version you sent me through my phone compressed it, so it, the address was not on the box. Like, I, could still, I could see it on mine, so... No. I can see it on the video that I'm on, it's on my phone. But um, speaking of videos, and I apologize that I didn't point it, I didn't say anything about it on our host oh, episode. Yeah. But we have an intro, yes. and it's fucking cool, and it's made by Watcher, longtime Exercast friend and listener Adam Goddard, and the creator of the original music that we used to have as a intro yep. back in the day. You said I thought. Or at nope. least he went and found something like that. Someone nope. else? Yep. Hmm. No. <laughs> Adam made um, the image that we use at the end of the episode. That's big enough, thank you. But it's um, Reagan essentially with um, the Kangol and the beat boy, uh, the B-Boy with uh, the record player, which is my favorite Exercast image. Um, yeah. So it's 
it was awesome that he just it was like shot me a message like, "Hey man, I'm working on something, and uh, I'll send it to you this weekend." And it's fucking cool. So Adam, I can never thank you enough, buddy. And I hope everyone likes it because it's it's fucking cool. And yeah. one of the tapes in it is actually, I believe, Beyond the Door too, if I remember correctly. Uh huh. I I assume those are his own collect his own collection there, but not bad stuff. I'm sure Chuck wants a few of them. Sure. Send them my way. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, thanks for watching. Um like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Check out Chuck's eight films to die for that he's been posting every day. Yes, yes. Which uh every every review I've done all eight films together, if you combine all the views, it's probably not as many as my unboxing of my uh Lindsay Baker box set. That's we know good. what we're telling you to. We know what we're telling you to. We know what content makes content for you. We know what it, makes you box. <laughs> it's where it's like it's like nobody wants to. You know, like there's people that want to watch you review a movie, but they'd rather watch you just open a movie. No, I was um my wife and I signed up for a, a one of those mystery boxes for various things, um and I showed her. I said there's like a cottage industry of people who will just buy like the the horror pack Blu-ray set that comes in the envelope and just go let's see what I got this month. And that's all they do, you know, for they get those, they get half those their channel. You know. They yeah. get those free, a bunch of them. Many, many of them do, but not oh. all of them. Yeah. I would but say some of the stuff fact, I'm getting in, the, in regards to that, but I may, well, I may not be supposed to, but I may be doing an unboxing of some of those. I'm crates. not cutting anything else out, Chuck. I'm, I'm talking about I'm crates. Fucking shoot yourself. I'm talking about, about crates. Loot, loot type crates. Oh, but not okay. but not loot crates. But that's the thing, is that, that, that subgenre mm -hmm. of YouTube video, oh, views out the ass. Tons of views. Yeah. 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 Well, our most popular videos are unboxings, so. Same. Works for us. And hopefully they. Podcast. Let's see hopefully, how. Uh, hopefully they stay for the host, show. Uh, let's see how our review of host spikes in terms of views. <laughs> let's see. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, everyone, thanks for watching. There we go. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,